two, one. Hi, we're here at the studios of Wisconsin Public Television in Madison, where we had a chance to sit down with Paula Kerger, who's been the president of PBS since 2006. We started our conversation by asking her what she thought public television does best. Um, I think public television uh, in, in sort of the current landscape is the best in capturing uh, the local community. Um, in most parts of the country, the public television station, actually public radio as well, are the lo last local broadcasters. And so they're that connection uh, within the community. And so whether it's the local documentaries that stations produce or community outreach projects or even frankly being the portal for national work, they're that, that local link. And I think that is something that is, is different and, and distinct uh, than any other broadcaster. Mm -hmm. And coming from a national perspective as PBS president, what in that media landscape that we're moving into right now, what challenges and opportunities do you see sort of coming in the immediate future for public broadcasters? Well, there's great opportunities because um, over the years, you know, we put a lot of effort into creating the programming that we brought to the screen, and which was seen by a finite audience that could view a program uh, as it was scheduled for broadcast. And, the ability through TiVo type devices, the ability through on demand, the ability through streaming video and, and other distribution to take that same content and to push it out in multiple places so that people can access it where they want it and how they want it really just gives a, a, a life and an extension to so much of the work we do, the true long tail effect. Uh, in terms of the challenges, like every other media operation, we're just trying to figure out and how we're going to pay for this. So um, we're at an advantage over commercial broadcasters and commercial media in that we're not trying to make a profit, but we are trying to cover our costs. And so we're looking at philanthropy, we're looking at different uh, revenue support um, models that would help us to bring content to, uh, to as wide an audience as possible and, uh, and really help us to extend our work and do even more. As, as you've gone around uh, to visit the stations like you're visiting Wisconsin Public Television today, what are some of the uh, more exciting ventures that you've, that you've seen along the way from, from the different stations? Yeah. What Wisconsin does that is so interesting to me is the, is the outreach piece and how um, the station really looks at the community and, um, and really does convene conversation, whether it's done through electronic media, whether that's through online, or whether it's through broadcast or even through radio, or whether it's through town meetings and, and gatherings. Um, and I think that the way that the station has thought about uh, serving the local community and then has created content that has worked well here but then has also been shared nationally is, is another great example of where I think um, uh, Wisconsin Public Television really stands out. Look at the World War II Stories project that was conceived as a project that really met the needs of its local community to tell local, a local history. Um, and when that project was built out, um, the um, station recognized that it created something that stations around the country could actually benefit from and actually created the tool kit and the basis that stations around the country then used to create their own local history. So I think that's an example of what, what Wisconsin has done that's really different and interesting. Um, when you travel around the country, um, I look, I'll, I'll mention a couple of stations that I think are doing some interesting work. Of course, this is dangerous because mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to leave out a lot of innovation, but let me just give you a couple quick mm -hmm. examples. I was in Nashville last week. Uh, their station is the physical home to a number of arts organizations that actually live in the same building. And um, in, around the, um, the coffee room, a lot of interesting program ideas have been created just by being a physical convener mm -hmm. of organizations. In uh, Columbus, Ohio, the station has a facility as part of the Science Museum there. So uh, families that come to visit the Science Museum can actually see some of the production facilities for uh, WOSU. And uh, their weekly high school academic program is actually taped right there at the Science Center. Um, looking in an online space, uh, Miami Public Television has done some interesting work with a, with a project called UView, mm -hmm. where they have uh, posted local video, uh, a lot uh, based from the arts community uh, throughout Miami. Mm -hmm. And I know one of the, the challenges that all broadcasters are facing coming up next February, and it'll affect a lot of viewers, um, I think offer, offers a number of benefits as well as the digital transition. Right. Um, 
often the side that's presented is that what you have to do to get it, what a viewer has right. to do to get it, and what a broadcaster has to do to do the broadcasting. What sort of uh, things have you seen that are going to come from the benefit side of, of that transition? Well, there are huge benefits. I mean, the reason that the federal government uh, decided to adopt a, a, a hard cutoff for analog television was really to force all broadcasters to really seize the opportunity of digital broadcast and, and fully embrace its implementation. And so um, you can look at it, as, um, as some have chosen to do, as, uh, as, as you describe, as, as an obligation. But the opportunities there are significant. Um, for Wisconsin Public Television, the use of the spectrum that had, um, uh, in an analog, uh, environment allowed the station to broadcast a single channel mm -hmm. is now um, giving the station the opportunity to broadcast multiple channels within that same bandwidth. So if you have um, your old rabbit ear set and you get a little converter box to slap on the back of the set, you can still continue to watch free over the air television and not just see the one um, Wisconsin Public Television station that you uh, have enjoyed for years, but also you can watch a 24 hour kids channel, you can watch uh, create, which is a lifestyle channel, you can watch the Wisconsin channel, so that you have the opportunity for more choice and, mm -hmm. and, and convenience in the programming that you watch. And so, um, and the, the picture is clear, right. so you'll have a very nice crisp picture um, that is, um, I think, new life to your old set. Right. <laughs> and I think that uh, across the nation, public television stations have been sort of out in front of the forefront of exploring those extra opportunities that come along with it. Well, you know, it's really interesting because public television, um, I think, has been a great innovator over the years, and, and I talk about that a lot when I'm visiting with groups around the country, and I think when I talk about innovation, people automatically assume programming content. You look at, you know, great series that we've had on the air that were cutting edge and, and so forth. But the other area where public television has been a true innovator has been in technology. Closed captioning was created by public television. The first satellite transmission was done by public television. One of the first adopters, uh, aggressive adopters of HD television were in many communities the public television stations. And public television was the first to really think about multicast, being able to split the signals into and serving different communities. And I think that the reason that we have continued to sort of be ahead of the curve is that we're always looking at technology and then thinking, wow, how can we take this and, and then use that to extend our mission and use that in service rather than how do we just take this technology and try to make money on it, which mm -hmm. is what the commercial guys obviously have to do because they're, they're business enterprise. And so I think that as we have thought about all these new technologies, um, we have then developed um, both the content as well as the infrastructure to make it happen. I think the next innovation for public television is going to be mobile. As you move now, I think it'll be your third year as, as president of PBS. What sort of immediate goals do you have set on, on your plate, both you know, technology, funding, those sort of things? Well, uh, there's a whole series of things. One is, I mean, the, sort of the overarching uh, goal that I have as I look forward is I want to make sure that we fully move into this new digital era with our stations vibrant and important, I would say, vital members of the communities that they serve. I want to see the stations with the resources that they need and the tools that we can provide them. Uh, as well as the content. And so in order to achieve that, um, I'm working to help make the case for increased federal funding because I, I feel that you know we've all, we always struggle for the limited amount of federal funding that we need and um, we never get quite enough and uh, so I think that there's a case to be made there. Um, looking to bring in more philanthropy into public broadcasting uh, through either major gifts or membership, I think that's important. Looking to bring in uh, fresh content uh, both for children as well as for adults, uh, particularly um, we're particularly focused uh, in building up news and public affairs, in taking a hard look at arts and culture, and looking at what additional work at finding new voices and increasing the diversity of, uh, of voices on public broadcasting that are more reflective of the diversity of this country. I think is also important. So these are all some of the big uh, priorities that that I have ahead for me over the next couple of years.